You may have heard that the 2016 BCAPL and USAPL National Championships are going to use Fargo ratings for all of the events. I'd like to explain what some of the implications of that are for you, the player. The PlaySiPool.com website has this very nice graphic that shows all of the events, whether they overlap, when they start, when they finish, and who's eligible to play. Detailed guidelines for each event can be found at the PlaySiPool.com website by clicking on the entry form for an individual event. I'll explain using the BCAPL singles and team events as examples. If you look at these, you'll see the words platinum, gold, silver, and bronze all over the place. And the old division names, Leisure, Open, Advanced, Master, Grandmaster, are nowhere to be found. It's not that we've replaced those old division names with names of precious metals. The difference is much more substantial than that. To explain it, I will talk about the old divisions in the context of Fargo ratings. With Fargo ratings, every player has a number. If you're a professional player, you have a number toward the right on this scale here. If you're an absolute beginner, you have a number toward the left. Most of us fall somewhere in between. Here's roughly the distribution of ratings for players in the, the old open division. You see there's a wide range. Most of the players are in the 500s. Many are in the 400s. Many are in the 600s. Importantly, if you were to look at who finishes high in the tournament, who goes home with, with most of the money, it's players well into the 600s. Well, this is not surprising. It's a pool tournament. Better players are supposed to do better. But here's the problem. This is a divisional pool tournament, and it suffers from the same problem that all divisional pool tournaments suffer from, and that is that most of the players that finish high and go home with most of the money are actually playing at the speed of the next division up. So the players that are in the final bracket of the open division actually overlap in skill pretty well with the players in the master division and the players in the advanced division. And again, this is a problem with all of the divisions. So for the people who go year after year and are in the middle of their division in with the bulk of the players, sure, they have a chance of winning some matches and, and maybe even tickling the money rounds. But because of this long tail to the right, they have virtually zero chance of going deep into the tournament. The winner of the leisure division plays better than most open level players. And the winner of the open division plays better than most players in any division. If you look at all of the players playing in singles that are at a particular skill level, you'll frequently see that they're split between multiple divisions. So this particular example at 650 speed, you see that there's players in the master's division, players in the advanced division, and players in the open division. Here's how we deal with this problem. We forget all the old divisions. We just look at the entire distribution of players that sign up for singles. That's the white curve. That's everybody. Players right now are just signing up for singles. Then if you're in the top 15% of this group, you're in the platinum division. If you're in the bottom 15% of this group by rating, you're in the bronze division. And then that whole big clump in the middle, we roughly divide it into half, and the upper middle is the gold division, and the lower middle is the silver division. Where are these lines drawn? We don't know. Once again, everybody just signs up for singles, and we only draw these cutoffs after everybody has signed up. Here's a couple of reasonable questions for you to ask. What if Fargo rate has no information to rate me? Do I still benefit? And if so, how? Well, absolutely you still benefit. And here's how. Let's say you're a former leisure or open level player coming out to Vegas, and we have no information at all to rate you. You will come in with what we call a starter rating that is commensurate with your former classification as leisure or as open, and you'll be in the clump of similarly situated people. In the old way, you'd come out, maybe you'd win a couple of matches, and then you'd run into a brick wall, and you'd hit a couple of monster players that have snuck in. Well, we may not you have you rated, but we have many of those high-level players from elsewhere rated. So you are much less likely to hit that brick wall, much less likely to run into those monster players. I'm not saying it won't happen. It will happen, but it will happen much less frequently than before, and that's how you benefit. How many players in the U.S. and Canada have at least 100 games in our system and a Fargo rating over 600? It's 2,400 right now. So it's in the thousands, the number of players that cannot slip into a division they don't belong in and cannot sneak their way onto a team where they don't belong. So let's look at the team events. I'll use the former open team division as an example. It's the largest division. 
the guidelines were that you could have at most one advanced player uh, on a team and the rest could be open. Let's look at some of the implications of that. A typical team, most of the five or 600 teams, might look something like this. It might not have an advanced player on it at all. It might be a group of people that are friends that played together all, all year. And it might be from a small or rural area where there really aren't a lot of high-level players. Unlike small town and rural areas, major metropolitan areas can field all-star teams within the old guidelines. So you might find four people who are flying under the radar and still classified as open who actually play at quite a high level and get a strong advanced player. And you can get a team that might total over 3,200 points and is way higher than the bulk of the teams in skill level. The new guidelines include a gold division with a team cap of 3,000 points and a platinum division with a team cap of 3,250 points. So that typical open team that might have a total of 2,600 points or something may face stronger teams, but they're not going to be ridiculously stronger like that all-star open team. And that all-star open team has a choice. It could either join the platinum division, in which case it would have a very competitive team, or it could choose to switch out a couple of players or maybe form two teams and fit into the gold division. Burger ratings come along with a second number that we call the robustness. And right now, that's just the number of games that the rating is based upon. The higher the robustness, the more firm or established is the rating. And we have 200 as a cutoff for considering a rating to be established. When a player comes to nationals in Las Vegas with fewer than 200 games in the system or no games in the system, then there is some influence of what we call a starter rating. Starter ratings are guest Fargo ratings for players with unestablished ratings. They may come from local or regional ranking information that we're aware of, or they may come from association with the prior classification as leisure, open, advanced, and so forth. For players with a robustness of zero, they will play according to this starter rating. For players with some games in the system but fewer than 200, they will play according to a weighted average of this starter rating and the emerging Fargo rating. By the time a player reaches 200 games, the influence of this starter rating has diminished to zero and is forgotten. One thing that's important to note is that a female who is a 500 plays at exactly the same speed as a male who is a 500. For this reason, females may enter the mixed divisions at no disadvantage. There are 15,000 players now in the U.S. and Canada with more than 100 games in our system, and this number is growing rapidly. When you and others from your area come to Las Vegas to Nationals in July, you'll be contributing to coupling players in your area to players every place else. We are in testing phases of league management software designed to pull games in every day and update players' ratings every day. And our vision is that leagues everywhere adopt this software and we get players rated all over.